This is Echo 3, and let's discuss intermeshing rotors. These style of helicopters are sometimes referred to as synchrocopters. The very first one was the Flettner FL-265, invented in Germany in 1938 by Anton Flettner. It was a single-seat helicopter and is considered the safest helicopter of its time. This style of helicopter is known for being very stable. Currently, the American Kaman Aircraft Company produces a model called the Kaman K-Max that is used as a sky crane for external sling loads on construction projects. For this tutorial, we shall build a small two-seater. No modded parts will be used in this build, but I am going to be using the Breaking Ground DLC for the rotor parts. With the crew area established, we can begin putting together the aerodynamic control surfaces. This craft will not be using any reaction wheels for control, so this will need to be entirely aerodynamically stable. I am using these intake parts as structural pieces. In the past I used some of the structural parts and they are way too heavy and it made my craft back heavy and I had to compensate with ore tanks and there's really no need for that so I'm just going to use some lighter parts in the back and that's what I do. Now if you note I'm putting these control surfaces on and I'm going to be tilting them slightly in different directions. So I'm only going to be using these two control surfaces in the back and I'm going to be getting pitch and yaw control out of them so I'm going to angle them in such a way that I can get control both ways. I'm also going to be tilting them slightly because I intend this craft to mostly fly forward so I want the wings to basically be straight on to the wind or parallel to the ground so that they will be more stable in forward flight. Same thing here, I'm going to be adding a couple side wings and I'm going to give them a little bit of a dihedral angle here. This again will give the craft more stability in the yaw axis and then I'm going to tilt them up slightly in the front so that they will be more straight on as the craft flies forward. So I'm trying to give a very stable design here with all the aerodynamics. Now we can throw on a couple of these cubic struts. I'm going to be attaching some batteries onto these and I need some open nodes for that so I'm going to be using the cubic struts for that. Now we need to think about our electrical uses. I'm going to make an electrically powered helicopter so I'm going to throw on some batteries. Now these batteries are also going to act as our attachment point for the rotors. Now because these batteries are a lot of connection points I am auto strutting basically everything if I did not do the auto strutting, the lift from the helicopter blades kind of pulls the batteries apart and really kind of makes the craft unstable. So by auto strutting, and you can use regular struts too to help with this, it just keeps the craft together. Now let's see, we could throw on a few solar panels on this thing, a couple ought to be fine the solar panels will kind of create a canopy for the cockpit this will just help charge the batteries if we're in sunlight although we're not going to really need a lot of, of charge because I don't intend to fly this very long now if you've seen any of my other helicopter tutorials you'll know that we will be using the Cal 1000 to help control the angle of the blades now we'll throw in a couple rotors the one rotor will need to set to counterclockwise rotation and the other rotor will set to clockwise rotation. I like to bind the motor power to the RCS action group. That's what I did just back there. That just makes turning on the rotors easier. It's just one button turns on the rotors. And I'm reducing the motor power. It's just not going to need full power, full size to run the rotors at the full RPMs. So by reducing the size, we're going to reduce how much power consumption and weight that the rotors have. And really the best way to do that is through testing. So I have tested this design and come up that I don't need full power on these rotors. Now we're setting up the propeller blades here. I am giving them a control authority of 4 degrees, although in some testing I found that 6 degrees work better with this particular design. I'm also going to tilt the rotors slightly forward. Maybe I tilted them a little too much in this particular design, 
but what that's also going to do is give us more stability and make this craft want to fly forward. Now I'm going to tilt these slightly to the side, these masts here, because in real life these rotors could collide. But this is also going to help with our stability and flight. This design works really well, so by tilting them like this we're going to have a stable, easy to fly helicopter. Now I want my rotors to be just slightly behind the center of mass. Again, this helps with forward flight. The front of the helicopter will kind of want to naturally pitch down, which then the helicopter will want to fly forward. With that set, now it's time to start setting up our action groups. The Cal 1000 is going to be bound to the main throttle, and then the propeller blades are going to be bound to the Cal 1000. I'm giving a deployment angle and I found negative one, negative two on the low end and between eight and ten degrees on the top end there. The negative number just makes descending a little easier. You can go with zero. I just found that it descends painfully slow so by giving it a negative deployment angle that works really well. Now we can throw on a couple pilots in here. We'll have Jeb and Val in the cockpit and we will be able to go out and give this thing a good test flight. Everything looks like we are set up pretty well. I disabled roll on the back control surface. I don't think we really need it. Now for the quick test flight. Good luck Jeb and Val. May the Kraken be ever in your favor. This is where I increased the deployment or the control authority to six degrees on the rotors. I found it worked just a little better with this design. It seems to be very easy to control as we're flying around the Kerbal Space Center. Just I did not have many issues with this. Now, in my case, I did connect my joystick and am flying with it as opposed to the keyboard. I did find it was a lot easier to control that way. But I do really like this design. What do you think of it? Please share your thoughts in the comments. This is Echo 3, and thanks for joining me in this discussion on intermeshing rotors. I will see you next time.